It's time to get the latest on the green and gold as we go in the huddle. In the huddle on the Woodward Radio Network. In the huddle is brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. Now, here's Bill Scott and Green Bay tight end DJ Williams. And welcome tonight on this Monday from Tanner's Sports Bar in Kimberly. Good to have you along here with uh, DJ Williams back in the saddle after a bye week off. How was your uh, time away? I had a great time. Um, you know, it's good to be back to work. I mean, I did kind of miss it. I, I will say that. But I had a phenomenal time back at Arkansas. And I got some good stories for you. I mean, <laughs> you can, I don't even know if they're all appropriate. But I, well, I, I figure I'll share What stopped you so far? <laughs> yeah, very true. So, uh We'll talk about that later on in the show, I guess. All right. All right. So I'm sure you'll just they'll just jump out of your Yeah, they'll, they'll probably usually yeah, do. As they as they usually do. So a week necessary for the bumps and the bruises. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a point in time though where you know when you're in a you're in a pennant race or a or a division title race, uh, you're six and three, you're knocking on the door of the Bears. Is there a point where you say I, I will, you know, time to get back to work and get after it. Yeah, very true. I mean, we got momentum. We were off a four-game winning streak. The Bears are playing well. I feel like the Vikings are playing um, good, too. And, you know, Detroit, they have the talent, you know, to show up at any given point in time. So, I mean, all our division games are coming up. we got seven games left in the regular season, and five of them are division games. And you know how important those are when it comes to who's going to be in the playoffs or not. So it's time to really – start focusing and getting serious. You now, know. You know, Mike McCarthy's been pretty straightforward with this five out of the last seven in the division with the media. Yeah. Uh, in, in his message to the fans, I would imagine he's doubled to you guys. Oh, he hasn't said a word. I, 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 that just came off the top of my head. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm for, I mean, I guess I got that mind. I guess we got the mind, you know, frame or whatever. I mindset. Guess we got, yeah, we got the mindset right on track. But, yeah. <laughs> he hasn't even told me. Yeah. I got a little bad news today. Oh, my gosh, that's terrible. I got to go talk to Big Mike. I got a fine in my locker this morning. Is that right? I did. What could you possibly have done? Well, that's what I said. For, when I saw it, I was like, what could I have possibly done to deserve? All right, so I'll tell you about it. So, you know, last game we had a – I came out the third quarter for the hamstring injury. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't too bad. It was just a little tweak. And um, – so um, I talked to the training staff about it. They knew I was going home to Arkansas for the bye week. I had trainers and, you know, treatment available for me at Arkansas. They said, go ahead. We'll talk to the guys. Send them, you know, MRIs. So this is a know. team fine. This isn't a league fine. Team fine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Sorry. So, you've been uh, a bad boy. All right. So I go home, get my treatment, feel great, stay in contact with my training staff. DJ, how are you doing? You know, it's, you know, bye week is almost over. I'm feeling great, ready to roll. Good. Good. We'll see you Monday. All right. So uh, we get there. We had practice today. Everything was great. And I get a letter in my locker. I was like, you know, it had my name on it. I was like, okay, cool letter from a fan. I open it up, and it said, you've been fined $10,000. I'm like, so you know me. I walk upstairs. You know, there's, there's I think y'all misplaced this. <laughs> you said, what are you talking about, Mr. <laughs> DZ? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was in a meeting, so I haven't had a chance to talk to boss man yet. But um, they said, you know, I missed treatments. I, I was like, well, I, I thought we were on the same page with all this stuff. You know, I was at the stadium eating breakfast. I mean, I guess it was a $10,000 breakfast, you know. <laughs> it wasn't even that good. I mean, if I would have known it was going to cost $10,000, I probably would have had, like, extra sausage or something. But uh, I don't want to talk about it. I mean... Hopefully well, I you can, brought it up, so you can't say I don't okay. want to talk about it. <laughs> I just don't. I, to, to, to boss man, I mean, how do I walk in? And, yeah. You know, I mean, I guess all they wanted me to do is go to the physician and give him a handshake and tell him I'm all right. Yeah. And I was like a $10,000 handshake. I mean, it's just, jeez. Yeah. I mean, maybe My, I can go to Oneida, put it on black, and try to win it back. I don't know. <laughs> I might have to, or it'll be real bad news if yeah. I lose. Well, my, my first piece of advice would be to uh, swallow your pride and pay the fine. But, but, uh, but, but then, but I'd still go up and say, you know, I would at least. Then I practice today. I, 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 you know? I would at least bring it up and just say, you know what, I thought we were on, I thought the trainers and I were on the same page. That's, what I'm, and that's what I'm shooting for. And yeah. I didn't miss practice. I'm healthy, ready to roll. Look good today. You know, um, I thought I was going to be a little bit chubby, you know, being on the bye week. Yeah. But my, my butt looked just fine for you, so you don't have to worry about that. 
So uh, everything looked good. <laughs> That's uh, that is odd. I just realized. Does that on, happen? Is that a fairly radio. routine thing? <laughs> All right, we're on radio. Nobody saw me point at the lady in the <laughs> lady in the you know audience. I'm, I wasn't referring to Bill. That my butt looks okay yeah. for him for the listeners out there. Yeah, I don't normally go there. So, <laughs> um, the uh, the pack. Does that happen very often though? What's that? Have you ever heard of any of your teammates? Can you find? Because maybe they just got it out for you. No, I doubt. I mean, I've heard some here and there, and some. I mean, I've been fine before for being late, and that was my fault. But I really feel like yeah. this one was just a misunderstanding. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll get it cleared up. Yeah. It's you all know? right. Yeah. It's all right. I hate to, because uh, you've been, you know, I hate, I hate to see it go without this this Christmas season. You know. Well, yeah. My my family's probably like, no. Yeah. You know, here's yeah. my Christmas present. I mean, there goes their presents. Yeah, that right down the tube. You know? So you go. In fact, I would say, if I I would walk into Mike's office and say, uh, Coach, uh, Coach Mike. That ten thousand dollars was my family's Christmas money. Yeah, Just, you know. Yeah. See if that works for you. Maybe put some teardrops in my eyes or something. Yeah, that'd be good. All right, Packers uh, with a busy uh, time during the uh, during the bye week, mostly with injuries. Uh, you know, you'd think everybody's getting healthy, but the news has not been healthy news. Brian Balaga today placed on IR. The team signed Vixa Oto to fill that open roster spot now Vic's a defensive lineman slash outside linebacker not an and of course tackle. Brian Lumberlock yeah. is an offensive yeah. tackle so you know if you read into that move you say well you know what maybe Clay Matthews is going to be down for a little while um I'm not sure you know I saw Clay this morning you know with a little pep in his step he looked good I mean I don't not sure you know what how he stands medically or physically and I can't touch on that because I have no idea but it was good to see him in the locker room, and, you know, that does, you know, I could see why it would ra raise questions about Clay bringing in, you know, another defensive player. And, uh, yeah, I actually just found out about Balaga today, unfortunate. That sucked. I mean, on the play, I felt terrible, 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 because he tripped on my foot, you know. Gosh, wow. this is bad news, DJ. Maybe man, that's man. why you got fined $10,000. <laughs> there we go. And now it's making sense, you know. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, T.J. Lang going to take over for the rest of the season at right tackle. He filled in uh, admirably uh, at, at right tackle. And uh, Evan Dietrich Smith at left guard the rest of the way. Uh, Greg Van Roten and Dan Barclay. I know, fans, that really makes you feel really good about what the Packers' backup plan is if they have another injury. So uh, we'll see. I'm sure the Packers might be scouring the waiver wires as well. We'll uh, pause and uh, we'll come back and meet tonight's guest and have a whole lot more fun here with DJ Williams. In the Huddle continues after this on the Woodward Radio Network. And we are back here at Tanners and Kimberly. Good to have you along here. Transportation for our guests during the season brought to you by LNS Classic Limousine Service. Personal professional service for all occasions. Call Lenny or Sue, 920-730-8297. Lenny has his own cheering section with him here tonight again. Way to go, Lenny. Lenny. It all helps, right? It all helps. In the uh, huddle is brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. And we are back with DJ Williams and tonight's special guest. He is an undrafted free agent after four years out of uh, Newberry College in South Carolina. A member of the Packers practice squad this season. His first year with the team, Brandon Bostick. Brandon, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? Good, good. I'm going to have you slide your mic up there a little bit. Jeez. There you go. First time doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't be nervous. <laughs> DJ bit. will loosen you up, I promise I you. I got you. I promise you. 39 games in college, 24 starts near the top of the school record books in every major receiving category. Played uh, one season on the Newberry basketball team as well. Joined the uh, team following the conclusion of the 2010 football season. Played in 19 games, five starts in a 2.7 points per game average. How did that come about? Playing college football, all of a sudden you decided to give the basketball team a try? Yeah, uh, in high school, I always played two sports, basketball and football. So. Uh after the football season, basketball coaches asked me that I want to play, so I said, uh, "So I said, why not give it a shot? Try it out. I like the, I like everything about it. It's just totally different from uh, from football." Yeah, gotta be pretty tough though, finishing football and then trying to just jump right into basketball. Yeah, it was pretty tough. Uh, the coach gave me like two weeks off, but mm -hmm. that's not a real break. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's athletic. He shows his athleticism on the basketball court. I remember the other day. I want to say about two, three weeks ago, we're in the, we have a basketball court in our facility, and yeah. that's usually where we have our walkthroughs. 
And we had a little football around. I was like, Brandon, just go do a 360, just messing around, you know. And he picks up the football. The, the whole offense is in there. <laughs> you know, McCarthy's in there. They're just looking like, all right, he's going to go try. He just jumps up, just doesn't even take any steps, just jumps up, does a 360. He's still going up. You know, it's like his head's almost hitting the rim, and he dunks. And I'm just like, you know, McCarthy's like, man. And A-Rod's a like, <laughs> man. And I'm like, God, he looks so much more athletic than me right now. You know, <laughs> why did I tell him to just do that? Yeah, so it was I mean, God, it was a terrible idea. <laughs> God. So you, <laughs> so you play wide receiver in college, and now you're uh, now you go to tight end in the pros. Uh, you know, your thoughts on? Did the uh, pack, did you, were you going to do that ahead of time, or did the Packers say, "We want to sign you, but we want to sign you as a tight end"? Yeah, that's pretty much how it went. Uh, college, I was. Wide receiver, I was like 245, so when I came out, I gained weight, I was up to like 255, so I almost didn't have a choice. I mm -hmm. can't play receiver at 255, so yeah. they saw me tight end, and uh, I'm enjoying it. If he stayed at 245, then he would have told McCarthy or Ted, I I'm, I'm going to come play receiver. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I wouldn't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, majored in sports medicine, uh, or sports management, I should mm -hmm. say. Uh, what do you want to do in, with a sports uh, management degree? I'd like to try to be an agent or something like that. Okay. Like, pretty much some of the sports after it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. Or maybe a coach. So you want to, if you don't get rich in the pros, you want to get rich there, or you'd like to get rich in both? i like to do a little bit of both. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Signed in, uh, in Green Bay. What was, uh, what was the thought process? I mean, right now, I mean, I think you can see the writing on the wall in front of you. There's five guys on the active roster at tight end. So who gave you the advice to come to Green Bay? Uh, uh, my agent. He did, huh? Yeah. But, uh, but coming out of college, I was undrafted. So I've always been like that guy. So I had to work hard to get where I am at now. So it's just another obstacle for me. Mm -hmm. so you mean, maybe it, Maybe it, you saw that DJ Williams guy and said, yeah, I saw you know, DJ, I know he's a little soft. You can make it. <laughs> yeah. I'll figure I'll just go and start doing 360s and show him how more athletic I am than everyone else. So. Tell me what you see in, the, in Brandon on the practice field. I say you see that athleticism. You know, he's very tall. He has good hands. And he has the experience of being a receiver. And uh, he's taking the time to put on weight and show up in the you know, run blocking game, which is huge. And you don't see very many athletic tight ends like um, himself do, but he's doing that now, and he's still going down the field. He's extremely fast, and I probably need to stop talking about all the stuff that he can do probably better than me while I'm on the <laughs> <laughs> But well, it is what it is. You know, I mean, it's it's the truth, and it shows up on the film, and I think it speaks a lot if we have five tight ends on our roster, um, on active roster, and still have another one on practice squad. It shows his potential. I think there's, uh, when you look at this team at, at the tight end position before you were here, few years back and there may be you know one guy would be classified as an outstanding receiver one guy would was a really good blocker but couldn't necessarily catch or they wouldn't use him as re you know the skill set of this group of players right now is so diversified in terms of being able to do anything they ask you to do including being very good on special teams yeah that's our niche and that's what we're trying to do and push at. I mean, you can see on game film, everybody was, you know, Crabtree's knock was, you know, he's big and he's a good blocker, then he springs a 70 plus yard touchdown, you know, and just it's showing up on tape. And I think any one of our guys has the potential to make a big play at any point of the game. Okay, so practice squad guys, normally in practice, once the regular season rolls around, you're playing scout team stuff. Yeah, pretty much. All right, so you're facing the Lions mm -hmm. this week. Who are you going to be? I'm, uh, I think I'm 87. I think that's pretty uh, Pettigrew. Pettigrew. Yeah. Okay. I, I do practice squad, too. I'm Scheffler. But <laughs> there's sometimes, you know, I, I, I have I love practice. I mean, I love being on the scout team for sure, for sure, because, you know, I'll put the receiver cap on, too. Yeah. So I, mean, I can be <laughs> Calvin Johnson. You know, I can be anyone and just – I'm probably not as good as I think I am when I'm out there, but in my mind, I just... I can't imagine that. <laughs> I'm unstoppable in my mind. Uh, <laughs> Calvin Johnson, you look a little bit like Calvin Johnson. I mean, you got that frame. Maybe, yeah, uh, maybe an inch, inch, shorter, yeah. inch too short. Three. We both have three. that year-round tan, you yeah. know, so... A.K.A. African-American, not yeah. be politically correct. Well, you went there. So. Why, why do they say that? I mean, why do they call white people white and black people Af African? Af wow, I can't even African say American. African American. You well, know? because if we didn't, then guys <laughs> like you would get mad about it uh, and, and, and claim racism yeah. right away. Well, I'm, so. I'm mixed, so I have free range to talk on either side. Yeah, yeah. So I'm always <laughs> politically correct. You know what? I don't. I don't think I've ever met a person more comfortable 
than you. Uh, it is what it is. And going you know? down that road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone that they like is, I mean, like I said, I I, just, I think it's great. It's a good laugh. I think it's great. Well, yeah. it, you know, it's it's a good laugh, but it's uh, you know, real. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't get sensitive. No I time think, to be sensitive. Well, I think it sets uh, I think it sets people a little bit at ease. Yeah, for you know? sure. You don't have to walk that delicate line all the time. <laughs> One thing about being a tight end at Green Bay, you cannot be sensitive. Yeah. Because. We we're probably the worst group. If somebody was having trouble with, you know, building their confidence, don't put them in the tight end room because we'll watch film like Ryan Taylor all the time. I tell him like, I'll, like, he'll... I'm sorry, you already know what I'm about to say. Because <laughs> I feel like Ryan may sometimes think he's better than he actually is, and I make sure I bring him down to his level every time in the minute. But he does the same thing to me. I mean, it's just the way it works, yeah. and we'll. J. Mike. Yeah, you two are pretty good around each other. Yeah, J. Michael, we probably, Crabtree, you know, kind of gets on him and tells him, like, J. Mike, you look like an idiot out there right now. Then he'll get sensitive and tell Tom how stupid his hair looks. and Mustache. His mustache. What about that? It looks like a pedophile, you know, running around. Is that, can I say that? Is that okay? You just did, so. <laughs> I did. I just did, but he does. Have you seen his mustache? I don't know if I, I've really paid attention that close. You know? The deal was in practice today, we were trying to, you know, find guests for later on the show. And I asked A-Rod, hey, you want to come do my show? And he laughed, you know, I said, yeah. and I said, I'll shave a mustache. Next time. Say, no, I'll, I said, I'll, I'll, save, time. I'll save a mustache. And Tom was like, I'll have my mustache on for a year if you come on my show. And A-Rod was like, okay, I'll, I'll do that one. So uh, we'll see if A-Rod goes on the show and if Crabtree keeps that pedophile look all year. <laughs> You know, I, I don't, um, I don't know, I know you got, I know, how many, do you have tattoos? Oh, you, know, you got a couple, I know DJ's got a couple. I, I don't know what the Crabtree look is all about. Jeez. I mean, this guy's got him from his wrist all the way, you know, it's like his whole upper body is yeah, one but big But he doesn't tattoo. have one on chest, though. Yeah, this is he probably yeah. needs one that well, says, little kids, I have candy now. With the <laughs> plus <laughs> I'm just pushing my boundaries tonight. Uh, yes, you are. Uh, yes, you are. Uh, several players uh, were turning to work today. Uh, Jordy Nelson, Sam Shields, Andrew Corliss, and John Kuhn. Derek Sherrod back practicing on limited basis as well. Two weeks to get ready to be activated or be put back on IR. We will pause, and uh, we'll see if uh, DJ's microphone still works when we get back. More after this. In the huddle on the Woodward Radio Network. And we are back at Tanner's Sports Bar and Grill in Kimberly in the huddle. Brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. Back with DJ Williams and our special guest tonight, tight end Brandon Bostic. Tough day for the uh, top teams in the NFC yesterday. Atlanta, Chicago, San Francisco, the New York Giants all losing yeah. Of course, the 49ers and the Rams played it with 24-24 tie. Both teams had chances in overtime and uh, couldn't get it done. Do you like the tie thing, or do you think you should just keep playing until somebody wins it? What do you think? I pretty much think you should play to, uh, like someone wins. I mean, you play in the whole game. I'm pretty sure you won't like a winner or loser, mm -hmm. you know? That thing, yeah, it's retarded. I mean, I, I mean, it was preseason they do ties, or what? What's the last time? Like high school. Two thousand eight is the last time there was a tie in the regular well, I don't, season. I saw that on um, TV, but the volume was down. Mm -hmm. I don't even know the situation. Were they in double overtime or something? Or I don't even know. This game, there's just there's just one overtime, fifteen minutes. So how does that add up at the end of the year if it comes down to a decision on who makes the playoffs? Well, six six two and one is is where the Niners are. Oh wow. And and you guys are. Six and three, so technically we're both they're six a, and three. They're a half game. Well, they're half game better than you. I mean, if you finished, if you know, if they finished, uh, you know, what thirteen two and one, and you okay. finished, you know, a half game behind them. Wow. You know, they're gonna they're gonna win, um, but they don't get you know if they if they finish one half down, they don't that that half kind of hurts them. So oh, that's crazy. I yeah. didn't even know that happened. Yeah. So uh, in in the uh, their left footed kicker. Um, who am I thinking of? Justin Hull. Help me. David Akers. Akers. Yeah. David Akers. The guy that nailed like a 60-yarder against yeah. us. 41-yarder, and he and he was set up ideally, and he and he pushed it just wide left. Jeez. So that was their chance to win. The Rams kicker made a 53-yarder, but uh, as the clock and replay showed, there was a, and they had made the call ahead of time by about a half second. It was a delay of game. They didn't get the snap. Jeez. Off in time. So the game was over? So, so then he went to a 58-yarder. Oh, he wow. missed that. And, you know, it was just 
I, I, you know, Jeff Fisher, their coach, after the game said, you know, he says, as much as you'd like to have a winner and a loser, he said, it, it's so many snaps by the time the end of the game that you're really risking guys to injury. injury? And, oh. You know, that's what he said. So like, I, that's his take on it, how obviously. Do you, how do you party for that after the game? Like, do you party with <laughs> well, the if you're winning the, mindset or that you lost the game? If you know you're the I mean? 49ers, I'd imagine you're not really partying because you feel at your place you it's should beat the Rams. Rams. Yeah. Oh. At the Rams, I would imagine, probably – in a little bit more of a party mood because yeah. they go into some in, into the 49ers place. They're six and two at a time. They're probably thinking, you know what? Hey, a tie. It's better than a loss. Fans you know? can't even yeah. trash talk. I mean, it's taken away from everything. Yeah. Man. Oh well. Yeah. At least what, it didn't happen at Lambeau. Um, what stops you from partying? What stops me from partying? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a good question. Uh, Ten thousand dollar fine. Yeah, who said that? That'll put a that'll put a pumps on it a little. By bit. the way, have you heard from uh, your sister Valerie yet? She has not texted me yet. I'm sure she's waiting on it, and uh, she'll probably email. She's probably emailing right now. So probably we emailing the coach and, right now. Yeah, probably emailing. I hope not. You know, for my sake, I'll probably get fined twenty thousand <laughs> after that. But uh, she'll probably have something to say about it. So you had a little life skills training today, huh? Yeah, we did. We um, thank- how'd that work out for you? I mean, based on Based on everything that you've said and done so far on this show, I, I would imagine you probably could use another session, but yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, you know, usually we have these meetings manda- uh, mandated by the league yeah. for, you know, programs to come in and talk to us. And I was talking to Jeff Saturday today in the hot tub. You know, he's old. He needs to get those bones working. So uh, he was talking. I talked to Donald in the hot tub, too. I don't know why I'm talking to all these guys old people old in the hot tub. tub. I love the hot You're tub. You're a name <laughs> dropper, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Uh, so, Jeff. You know, uh, Jeff, you know, me and him are just, you know, chopping it up. And, you know, he pretty much said all these meetings, because you still hear about people always getting in trouble. Yeah. You know, he's really saying the good are going to do good and the bad will just continue to do bad. But I think the approach that we had today was completely different. They had a military serviceman come in from the Air Force, you know, and, you know, you know, kind of makes hats sense. Off to Veterans them. Day. Yeah, you know. hats off to them, and we appreciate everything that they do for our, you know our country yeah. and give us the opportunity to come here and let me act a fool on the radio show. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's amazing what they do for our country, and you know, I'm very thankful for everything that they've done. So they came in and immediately had everybody's attention, and the way that they set up, they showed live film from them in combat fights and of training, and we realized how much they sacrifice and but how much preparation that they put into everything that they do. They don't give themselves a chance to make a mental error or a, a fatal error that would cause someone to lose their life. They're, they're so team and plan oriented. It was just unbelievable of how they took their training and how you can apply it to everyday life. And I think that really opened up everyone's minds to take it in. And I think they really probably helped people later on down the road in decision making and in turn probably saved a life. Mm-hmm. So they, I think their approach was phenomenal. So their, uh, their approach to things is kind of just a little bit like you guys' approach to things. Yeah, I mean, but you know, you I'm not saying we compare for what they do. Yeah. It's not a life or death you know, situation yeah. every day. I know people may say, oh, we take hits. I mean, these people are, it's a completely different, you know, and respect them way more than a lot of people who are out there not doing anything. They're mm-hmm. risking their life for us. So, but it was pretty cool to watch. Yeah. Speaking of taking hits, uh, Michael Vick, Jay Cutler, Alex Smith, all knocked out of games with concussions this weekend. Now, I personally think the NFL is doing a good job in terms of diagnosing concussions, recognizing concussions, and then making sure players don't return until they're ready to return. However, I think the NFL is doing a terrible job Jeez. in, <laughs> well, no stronger language than what you use so far today. <laughs> I, I think the NFL is, is doing a terrible job at enforcing the types of hits that are forcing these concussions. Now, I don't know if you saw the Cutler one last night, but it was a crown of the helmet to the chin shot that knocked him out of the game after just one half of football. Uh, it, it's these type things, and it's... You know, and it's not just quarterbacks, it's running backs and so forth, too. But when you lead with the crown of the helmet, you, you can't tell me that you, you can't learn how to not do that. If you're, if you're doing that, you're not being taught properly or, or you're, you, you, you have no thoughts for your own, mm-hmm. for your own well-being. I mean, you lead to a helmet, you're, you're taking a big risk every time. But, you know, in my opinion, I mean, that could be Aaron Rodgers. Crown to the helmet, crown, you know, crown of the helmet to the yep. chin, concussion, knocks him out. He's already had two concussions, Man. you know, a couple of years back. 
So, you know, the next one, who knows what that does to Aaron Rodgers. My point is this. If to, to get these players to, on the defensive side of the football to finally take notice and perhaps learn a lesson, certainly the fines have to increase, maybe a, a game suspension, but if a player is out for two weeks because he can't play because this guy gave him a concussion, that guy sits the same two weeks as well. That's what I hear. Unpaid. Too. I think, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I, I complete. I agree with that. If it's an illegal hit, yeah. for sure. Why not? Yeah, and and I think the league has to have the ability to review each. You know, not, it's just not cut and dried. I mean, they have to have the ability to review, mm -hmm. and take a look at it and, yep. and, and be the judge because you can't just make it an across the board deal. I agree. If it's you know blatant and it's on film and. You can justify it. I, I, I think that would be a, a great penalty because players don't like to sit out games because um, on, on top of fines, yeah, you know, we, we get paid every week. You yeah. know? So, I mean, it's, I think that will start pressing the issue because I do believe players have the ability to decide if they want to lead with the crown or the helmet where they can hit someone. I mean, it's not that difficult. I know people will say, oh, the game's just going so fast. They've been playing football their whole life. Right. They can control their body and how they hit someone. Yeah, and uh, and then on top of that, they if they're losing games, losing salary for those games, plus the team's missing their services, so yeah. it's like a double penalty. For sure. And I I would think that they would uh, have a tendency to back off just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. So that was my soapbox. Yeah. How about you? You got anything bothering you today? What do I have bothering yeah, me today? Yeah. Well, besides the you know besides the ten thousand dollars, I mean. <laughs> Jeez. You can afford that. Come on. No, I don't. My Aaron Rodgers. Good night. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I would tell you another story that happened in Arkansas. We'll probably have to wait until we turn the mics off again. <laughs> but uh, I want to hear more about Bostick's offseason trip or bye week trip. He went to South Carolina. Yeah, watched you beat do? up on my hogs. Uh, went to back South Carolina with my family and stuff. Just hanged out with them. Went to my brother's high school football game on Friday. They, had a, uh, first, they won their first uh, playoff game. So okay. I went to watch them play. Uh, Saturday, went to watch uh, the Gamecocks play the Hogs. God, Gamecocks won. Yeah, I, I, the Green Bay I saw uh, a couple of highlights on that one early on, and it was not looking <laughs> yeah. pretty, was it? It was over at halftime. <laughs> wow. <laughs> See, it wasn't over at halftime. I mean, it was a good. Technically, yes, but really, reality-wise, there's still a half to play here, right? Yeah. That's what you're saying, DJ? Something like that. Something like that. All right, we have to take a break. and. Uh, DJ's favorite part of the program is coming wait. up. Email segment. It is the Granite Peak email segment. Uh, we will do that. Bring Justin Hall into the fold. That's all coming up on In the Huddle after this on the Woodward Radio Network. And we are back at Tanner's in Kimberly. Good to have you along. Our program brought to you each and every Monday night by Mills Fleet Farm. DJ Williams and Brandon Bostick with us. And uh, we'll let you know that uh, with the ski season fast approaching, Granite Peak Ski Area is gearing up for an incredible winter. New this year, Granite Peak welcomes a new high-speed quad lift, whisking you up the mountain three times faster. Approximately 80% of the terrain now serviced with two high-speed chairlifts. Bring your friends and family and enjoy winter at Granite Peak. With the holidays just around the corner, give the gift of winter, Granite Peak gift cards. To order online and for a complete list of events and specials, visit Ski Granite Peak. Dot com. And just for uh, those of you in the uh, building here and those of you back home to let you know what some of the things that goes on here, we would encourage you to uh, attend a future show before the end of the season. DJ Williams is the absolute, he's either, he's either completely fallen off his rocker <laughs> or he's the nicest guy you ever want to meet, right? I appreciate I, that. I think really. we all like, I think we think it's the nicest guy thing. Now the, now the last couple of home games, DJ has... Has, has given away tickets to a Packers home game. And, and those are his tickets, all right? Now, because there's not a home game for a few weeks, for the folks here in, in, the, uh, in, in Tanner's, in the bar here, DJ has uh, pulled out a $100 bill out of his wallet and stuffed it in an envelope, and everybody here is going to get a chance to put their name in a helmet, and then we'll draw for it at the end of the show. So obviously you folks that are listening at home, we're glad you're with us. <laughs> but <laughs> sure. it would be really great to have you here uh, throughout the... Uh, just, just wait till next week. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I got something up my sleeve. All right, it is time for our email segment and I always take minutes away from Justin on the front side so we have no <laughs> problem extending this into the next segment because it is such a great part of our show. Let's go out to Justin Hull. All right, inthehuddleshow.com. That is the website. You can go there each and every week and uh, see the video, 
then later on in the week of the show, the replay, and of course, submit your email questions as well. Uh, we'll start with this one from Vicky in Appleton. Wants to know what would each of your guys' dream vacation be? Dream vacation. Uh, Brandon, you want to start? I think mine would be somewhere in Brazil. Brazil? Yeah. Why Brazil? I don't know. Just, just a random place. <laughs> dream vacation. He don't even know. Uh, <laughs> Mine would be, I was uh, looking up like these, I was, uh, you know how sometimes you just Google stuff and it leads you to something else? Well, usually it starts with YouTube and you're like, what is that? Then you go to Google to figure out what it is. I really have a big thing with serenity pools or infinity pools, what are they called? Or they just kind of keep going. And there's this place in Japan, I don't even know where it is, but uh, they had the, like the coolest infinity pool with like, you know, rose petals and stuff kind of going off into like with the trees and like, there was like a little dove flying around. And so I looked up where that is, and they have like massage parlors, mud baths. I've never had a mud bath. You know, I'd like to take a mud bath, you know. And uh, that'd probably be my dream vacation and with my dog, Shadow. You know? So you do have a dog. I do. Did, you, did you know there was a question in here asking if you guys had any pets? Oh, don't want to get me started on my dog. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I just want to know if you could afford a vacation like that. Not probably, after the fine. Hopefully. <laughs> Well, you know what, I, the way I see it, if I do have to pay this fine, then, you know, we're going to play extra hard. I'm going to give 100% effort so we can go to the playoffs because, you know, each playoff game you get bonus money. Right. So we just need to go ahead and win the Super Bowl, and I won't even think about the fine. Absolutely. That's the plan. It'll be yesterday's news. I'm going to be like, Aaron, you've got to score this touchdown right now because we need to win the Super Bowl <laughs> for my own personal game. <laughs> See, now I kind of want to get started on the dog here. Michaela in Madison, who emailed in, actually asking this week, do you guys have any pets? You can start. I have a dog back at home. His name is Rocky. <laughs> He's a pit bull. Pit do, bull. do you miss him when, when uh, you're up here? Does he when I was at home, I saw him. Yeah. Um, my dog. He's a victim of divorce. It was my freshman year. <laughs> I was dating this girl named Kelsey. I've talked about her before. <clears throat> and uh, she always wanted the dog from Homeward Bound uh, named Shadow. So I went and got a golden retriever and I named him Shadow. And he stayed with me in my dorm room for two weeks before I could surprise her for her birthday. But I told her beforehand that if we ever got a dog, it was gonna be our dog. You know what I mean? Not her dog. And so some things didn't work out. I didn't do anything, I didn't cheat. You know, just she went to college, I went to college. We grew up and wanted to experience new things. You know, good things. So anyway, we broke up and she kept the dog. And so one night I drove home to Little Rock and kind of snuck into her residence and uh <laughs> and uh i didn't have to try hard at all you know i just did you know a little and whispered thing and he bolted bolted from the backyard into my car and we kind of sped off in the middle of the night and uh ever since then oh that's 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 my right hand man me and shadow that's how we do this thing you got him with you up here yeah. He was just up here. The um, guy just fessed up to felony theft on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think the off the rocker was a little Look, more accurate. That's when she was, <laughs> you know, talking to other people. And so, but we're friends mm -hmm. now. And I let her, you know, have visitation rights every once in a while. <laughs> you know, if I'm in Little Rock, you know, I'll say she can come down for about 20, 30 minutes and say hi to the dog. <laughs> but that's my boy, man. All right. Yeah, that's my boy. Uh, we should move on from there. Uh, <laughs> Sheila in Appleton wants to know, Brandon, I follow you on Twitter and read some of your tweets. Where do you get your inspirational quotes from, or do you write them yourselves? Uh, I think it has to do with a little bit of both. I read a lot of books. I like to read motivational books. I like to listen to uh, motivational speakers. I YouTube a lot of stuff, and that's where most of my stuff comes from. Right now, I'm reading a book from a uh, guy named Eric Thomas. He's a good guy. He's uh, a good he has one. a book. Yeah. He just came out with a book, so I read a lot of his stuff. And uh, the, another Twitter question here, I gotta find it here. Oh yeah, Bill and Vondelak, how do I get a retweet from either one of you guys? <laughs> <laughs> tweet us right now, and we'll retweet yeah. you right now. <laughs> and I want more questions because I want to talk about this Eric Thomas dude. He's good. Like I watch his stuff on because you know I can't read, so I, I just watch <laughs> his stuff on YouTube. He's really good. So really that's, good. That's the audiobook collection that he has. So <laughs> that's what that is. Absolutely. All right, we will have more Granite Peak e email segment when we come back. This is in the huddle from Tanners and Kimberly on the Woodward Radio Network. Back at Tanner's Sports Bar and Grill in Kimberly. 
And we're in the huddle with DJ Williams and Brandon Bostic, brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. And before we get back out to Justin for more questions, we, uh, during the break, oh, yeah. drew the uh, drew the winner for the $100, crisp $100 bill right out of the wallet of DJ Williams. You may be exaggerated with Chris, but <laughs> it's, a, it's a $100. I got it right here in my hat. Bostic picked it, so it's not my fault. Oh. All right. Or it is my fault, one of the two. The winner is, let's see, Amanda Croner. Does that sound familiar? Oh, my God. Well, come on, get up here and grab your envelope. Give a round of applause, please. Yeah. I don't think she wants it. She don't want it? No, oh, there she is. Congratulations. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Don't spend it all. Go to, actually, go to the casino and put it on black. Double up. <laughs> DJ sure. will see you there in an hour. Right? <laughs> Trying to win my 10 grand back, for sure. All right, Justin, go I'm ahead. Just kidding. I'm you said just you want, kidding. DJ, you said you wanted to talk a little bit more about Eric Thomas, right? Yeah, I mean, he's a great guy. I actually had him come speak to us in college. If you have a chance to YouTube, I want to breathe as, as bad as I want to succeed. And it's very inspirational and it's trending huge on YouTube, on Twitter, on the internet. It's just a very inspirational guy, and hopefully one day we can have him on the show. I don't know how much that would cost. It costs like like ten thousand yeah. dollars. Maybe say twenty. Uh, no, 10, maybe 000, if, 20, maybe if you get your fine revoked here, then you can that's gonna put it to a good cause. That's gonna haunt me all week. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's the next question? All right, we'll get to the next one here. Uh, NFL-related question coming from Stephen Marshfield. Who are you more impressed with this year, Adrian Peterson or Peyton Manning? Uh, I'd say Adrian, uh, Adrian Peterson. He's coming back from a knee injury. I think he's doing pretty good this year. I'm probably going to go with Peyton Manning, who broke his neck, you know, and wants to play football for a living. I mean, not too many people can walk away, or he gets cut by the Colts because they, they didn't want to pay him all that money, and he gets picked up by a team, and they pay him $100 million. And... He has done nothing but prove all the doubters wrong. And uh, actually, he's going to put them in a good playoff chase, I feel like. so. Is, but I'm not, I can't go for somebody in our own division, you know? <laughs> you are. can't do that. It's kind of, if the playoffs started today, Indianapolis would play Denver. I still think that's like that'd the most, crazy, that would be, that'd be crazy interesting, yeah. yeah. That'd be nice. One, one more, Bill? Yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, Jeremy in Reedsburg, he wants to know what types of video games you guys play. Yeah. Of course, man. NFL man, 2012, 13. I hate playing sports video games, you know, because, like, when people, like this guy right here who beat me, I don't know how he talked me into playing it, but he did, because then he beat me, and I'd be like, you're such a loser because you're good at this game. You know, you could be doing something else, like reading books. You know, you need to do that more often. <laughs> but besides that, Mortal Kombat, that's me. You know what I mean? I invite Aaron over all the time to play Mortal Kombat. He never comes, you know, but I, I can see <laughs> So I usually play by myself, but it's okay. Shadow watches. It's all good. <laughs> all right, Bill, we'll go ahead and... Uh, we got to have two because we didn't have one last week, so you picked two winners. Okay, uh, Ooh, we'll wow. go ahead. We will pick... Um, I, you put me on the spot. You usually have a commercial to do this. Um, we'll go with Michaela. She had the question on the pets. And how about uh, Vicky with the Dream Vacations? We'll go those two oh, that's nice. with that's our nice. winners this My week. My mom's so. name is Vicky, so that's a good one. Unless it's a guy, then jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All right, congratulations. That's our uh, Granite Peak email segment. Uh, we do that each and every Monday night, and uh, just happens to be DJ's favorite part of the show. Favorite part of the show. The, uh, the Lions are next. You remember what happened the last time the Packers and the Lions met, right? Yeah, and the Dominican stomped on Evan Dietrich Smith. Yeah. I remember that. What did Evan Dietrich Smith do to, to force Dominican Sue to do that? Um, I don't know. Um, Probably said something to him that hurt his feelings. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but who knows what he said? You know. But whatever, mean, I, whatever, it's, it's, whatever it was, I hope he does it again. Well, it's a great know, tactic on. It benefits us. You know on, what I mean? On Dietrich Smith's part, because oh. you know you get under the skin of the the really good guys in the other team, and they totally lose it. Yeah. And I love how he always comes off to be like, you know, I'm such a nice, sensitive guy. There's no yeah. way that guy's nice and sensitive. He pretty much. Rips everybody's head off. Head off. Yeah. What he tries to do. I mean, I ain't mad at him, yeah. but jeez. Yeah. Did you hear? Well, I told you during break, so you've heard it. But uh, for the sake, let's pretend I didn't tell you during okay, break. Did enough. you hear what Jermichael Finley said today? 
I did not hear what the he Detroit did. Lions. What did he say today? Jermichael Finley today said the Lions are dirty, they're cheaters, and, uh, and, and he said, and it starts at the top. Man. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. You know, and it's very unlike J. Mike to to, re, to you know to get out on a limb and say things like that. It's very uncharacteristic. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> he was. Uh, <laughs> Bill's, uh, Bill's filling that one right. Yeah. yeah. This is uh, this is do or die for the Lions, though. I mean, they they lost to the Vikings yesterday. Mm -hmm. They dropped back a game under 500 in a division where everybody's above 500. They really can't afford any more losses, or at least you know maybe they can have one, but not to anybody in their division. No, they don't want to lose not to. For sure, it's going to be an intense game, and we know it. You know, like I said, their backs are against the wall. It's a divisional game. It's going to be a very intense. It's going to be physical. It's going to be big plays. It's going to be you know the crowd is going to be going ooh and ah. You know, oh my gosh, I hate my life. Oh my gosh, I love my life. So it's going to be a crazy NFL Sunday with football, hard hits, you know, big and, and just in plays. case nobody's told you yet, you do play five of the last seven in the division. So Let's do this Keep thing. that in mind, all right? Oh, big games. Wait. Hey, Brandon, thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. Thank you, Good nice luck to you. DJ Williams, it is another great week as always. Another great week. We'll next you. week, don't forget to come out because I got something up my sleeve. All That'll right, that's DJ Williams and Brandon Bostick. For Justin Hull, I'm Bill Scott. This is In the Huddle on the Woodward Radio Network.